What enables systems like Instagram to store billions of photos or Google to index trillions of web pages? In this video, we'll explore critical data management and scalability concepts that form the foundation of modern distributed systems. These patterns enable high scale systems to handle massive data volumes efficiently. Let's take a look. Data partitioning divides dataset into smaller, more manageable segments to optimize performance and scalability. There are two fundamental approaches to data partitioning. Vertical partitioning splits table by columns based on access patterns and data characteristics. This approach allows frequently accessed hot data to be stored separately from rarely accessed cold data. Large text fields and binary objects can be segregated from structured data to optimize storage I.O. patterns. For example, a user profile table might store basic information in one partition and large biography text in another. Horizontal partitioning divides tables by rows, typically using a partition key to determine which rows belong in which partition. This approach works well when data can be cleanly divided based on a specific attribute, such as price ranges or geographic regions. For instance, a transaction table might be partitioned by month, allowing queries for specific time periods to access only relevant partitions. Properly implemented partitioning can reduce I.O. for mixed workloads by aligning data placement with access patterns. The performance gains come from more efficient memory utilization and reduced data scanning during query execution. Database sharding extends horizontal partitioning to distribute data across multiple independent database instances or servers. While partitioning typically happens inside a single database, sharding spans multiple databases, often on separate physical machines. Sharding distributes data using partition keys and sharding strategies. Hash-based sharding applies a hash function to the shard key, distributing data evenly but making range queries inefficient. Range-based sharding assigns rows to shards based on key ranges, which optimizes for range queries but can create hotspots. Directory-based sharding uses a lookup service to map keys to shards. It provides more flexibility at the cost of additional complexity. The performance impact of sharding is substantial. Major platforms implement sharding to handle massive data volumes and write loads that would overwhelm a single database instance. They can achieve near-linear write scalability by distributing data across hundreds of physical servers through logical sharding. A significant challenge with sharding is handling operations that span multiple shards. Cross-shard queries and transactions introduce complexity as they require coordination between separate database instances. This can impact performance and complicate application design. Database indexing creates auxiliary data structures they optimize query patterns at the expense of additional storage and write overhead. Modern databases implement various index types. B tree indexes a balanced tree maintaining sorted data for range queries and point lookups. Hash indexes provide direct key to location lookups, but no range query support. Bitmap indexes are efficient for low cardinality columns like Boolean flags or status codes. Inverted indexes map content to records. They provide full-text search capabilities. A well-placed index can transform a full table scan taking minutes into a B-tree traversal completing in milliseconds. However, each additional index imposes some write overhead as the database must maintain these structures during inserts and updates. This represents direct trade-off in database design that engineers must balance. Replication maintains copies of data across multiple nodes to improve risk scalability and fault tolerance. Let's talk about how replication works in practice. There are three main approaches. In single leader replication, all writes go to one leader node. After the leader processes and stores the data, it forwards these changes to all replica nodes. This creates a clear, consistent order of operations. Multi-leader replication allows write to be accepted by multiple leader nodes. Each leader communicates their changes to the other leaders. This improves write availability, but introduces the challenge of handling conflicting updates, which requires complicated conflict resolution mechanisms. For leaderless systems, multiple nodes can accept writes. To maintain consistency, 
This system implements quorums where operations succeed when acknowledged by a minimum number of nodes and read repair mechanisms that fix outdated data during read operations. When data is written to the leader but hasn't yet reached all replicas, we call this replication lag. In asynchronous systems, this lag typically ranges from milliseconds to seconds, depending on network conditions. Many production systems use a compromise called semi-synchronous replication. A write is considered successful when at least one replica confirms receipt. This approach strikes a balance between performance and data durability. Caching stores frequently access data in rapid access storage tiers to reduce latency and backend load. The performance difference between in-memory cache access and disk access remains substantial. Modern systems implement several key caching strategies. Cache aside, also called lazy loading, has the application check the cache first. When data isn't found, it fetches from the database and populates the cache for future requests. Write-through caching synchronously updates both the cache and database when data changes. This ensures consistency between cache and storage, but increases write latency since each operation must complete in both systems. Write-behind caching, or write-back, updates the cache immediately, but asynchronously flushes changes to the database. This improves write performance but introduces the risk of data loss during failures before data is persisted. Content Delivery Networks, or CDNs, deliver content from edge servers positioned close to end users to minimize network latency. The core principle of CDNs is geographic distribution with intelligent routing. When a user requests content, the CDN routes them to the optimal edge server through one of several methods, anycast, DNS-based redirection, or HTTP redirects. The performance difference is significant. Modern CDNs achieve 30 to 50 millisecond response times for cache content compared to 200 to 500 milliseconds for origin fetches. Scalability measures how system performance changes when we add more resources. Linear scaling is the ideal scenario. Doubling the resources doubles the performance. This is rare in practice. Most systems experience sublinear scaling due to two factors, contention and coherence penalties. Contention happens when components compete for shared resources like locks or network connections. Coherence penalties occur when the overhead of keeping data consistent across multiple locations. The data management techniques we've discussed help minimize those limitations. When implementing these data management and scalability concepts, consider these engineering principles. Start with the simplest implementation that meets current needs. Instrument thoroughly to identify actual bottlenecks before adding complexity. Consider operational overhead alongside performance benefits and evaluate the impact on consistency, availability, and latency for each design decision. If you like our videos, you might like our system design newsletter as well. It covers topics and trends in large-scale system design, trusted by 1 million readers. Subscribe at blog.bytebygo.com.